Welcome to the Alina Design on Demand site. In this uh, demonstration, I'm going to just show you a very brief description of how to work the tools, how to log in, pick a document, and check out. We will start on the login page, which you, I assume, have already signed in and log in. Once you do, this is what you will see. Up here is your choice of a holiday flyer, flyers, or posters. We're going to go down here. I'm going to show you what's on the bottom. You have a, a my account button. That just shows all your information. You have an orders button. We have no current orders in Alina, so there's nothing we can show at this time. You have your addresses for billing. You can add a new address, edit the current address, or delete the current address and add a new one. You do have to have one in there, however. You have a shopping cart button that shows where, uh, what's in your shopping cart, which is the same thing as what's up here. You have a couple search features and site maps and welcome. These basically are just pages that just show uh, welcome you in, show you a few little items, nothing you re really need. If you have any questions at the end or at any time during the usage of the site, click on Contact Us. There's a phone number right here. My name, my email, and you can put your question in here and hit Submit, and it'll go to me. Most people do call, which is fine. Okay, now we will begin the process. First thing we would do is once we're in the, the product, is we will click on a job, something we want to create. We're going to use the flyer, which is, well, I think that's all we have at this time. You click on it. You would put in a, a SmartWorks number, which somebody would assign for you if you want one, a job title. <clears throat> Hit the blue customize button and it will load the product. Basically, here's what we've got. We've got your product that's loaded, ready to go, and to be edited. This is a standard flyer template. Over here, you've got a cursor tool, pointer. This is the pointer, this is the cursor. A hand tool to move items, to drag them around. You have a zoom tool to zoom into an individual area. You have an undo and redo button. You have a copy and paste. If you hover over them, it'll tell you what they are. You have a frame button to add different types of frames or images or boxes. This is a air, uh, download a soft proof, which would give you a full 300 DPI resolution proof. And then here's a series of zoom tools. So you can go in or out. And then this one here brings you back to home. This tool here, this is toggle view mode. Basically what that does, it'll show you the borders of all the items that are available on, for, on your template, as you can see. We will cover the tools here in a minute after I'm going to show you the logos tab. This allows you to change a logo on the fly, as you can see down in the bottom of the document. The text setting is not active until you click in a box with using the cursor tool. You have to click on the cursor tool in order for all these settings to be activated. A lot of these settings here are the same ones that are up here. You can see the, the uh, increase in den, indent for bullets and decrease, the justification of the type bodies, superscript, subscript, and normal, font sizes, fonts, colors, and then frame uh, colors and fill colors. And then these are sending to the back and going, uh, going to the, bring into the front. Or you can hit delete. 
The next one here is an add and delete pages feature. What this does is you can add a page. It'll give you a blank page. It will not duplicate the first, but it'll give you a blank page. And you can also, if you don't like it or want it, you can delete it right here or you can shuffle it up to the top, make that the primary page, or bring it back down. Just remember the one that, it, that when you do delete it, it is gone forever. Okay, now I will go over the a little bit of the tools with you. Here you have the pointer tool. You will need this tool to move items And you would need this tool clicked on to copy paste an item. Copy, paste. You can see what it does there. We will delete that for now. The undo and redo buttons, you can click. It'll put everything back to where it was. Or you can go back to where you were. But we're going to go back to the beginning. If you choose you want to add a text frame, you could add that. They always go at the top left for some reason. I think that's the software set up that way. But you can move it around to where any place you want. Click on the cursor tool and you can start to type in there. This uh, ruler up here is there so you can actually see, see some measurements for your type. Or if you don't want the ruler to show, you can shut this toggle view button off up here and that'll get rid of it and just show you the text box itself. And then again, to move it, you would have to click on this and you can move your type anywhere you want. If you would like to copy paste some type, you can highlight type in your copy or from a document outside of the tool. Do note that uh, text from Microsoft Word, if it's already formatted, you can copy and paste it in, but the formatting will not hold. If it does hold, it won't, it won't process properly. So it is best that if you copy type, you would uh, copy it. I use Command C to copy, and if you're going to uh, do that, you would actually want to click inside in between some current fonts to uh, get hold the, the current formatting of the document you're working in. That works best. So if you want to copy in something in the, in the header, right up here, something small, just copy that and go up in here. We'll just paste that over the top of this and then it just, it copies it just like it is. It's meant to be. But it will hold the formatting that way. It just will not hold formatting, copying it from outside the tool. Okay. Now, in, if you decide you say, I want to make some bullets, you would highlight your copy. You can go into the text selection here. You have bullet tools right here, and you have them right here also. You just click on the indent and that makes a bullet, bulleted indent. You can highlight another one if you want to go in a little further, and that goes in further. You can, uh, you can change the bullet to any, any kind of character you want to be. If you don't want this thing highlighted anymore, you just simply click the bulleted item back. This one will stay if it's not been highlighted. Here you have your... Uh, line spacing, letting, tracking, your font colors, your case, upper and lower, your baseline shifts, 
your position of the type, point size, fonts, and character styles, which are, we don't have any set. You got your justifications in there again, and they're all here as well. And then you've got your margins and space before and after amounts you can set to whatever you want them to be. It's one of these tools where you pretty much just have to kind of play with it till you to get to know how to use it and be familiar with it. We will later on be doing some individual videos on these sections by themselves. Guides, we have a guide feature here. We do not have a vertical guide. We have a, the vertical guide. We use a straight line from here. The uh, cross horizontal guides, we click this on. Click on the toggle view mode. Offset is 0.5 from the top, but you can set it to be from anywhere in the page. And then you can adjust the, how, the spacing of the lines to whatever you want them to be. And that's what that's for. Just using it to line up type. And if, you're not, if you don't need it, you can shut it off. And then if you don't want to look at the borders, you can shut that off by shutting that off. The next thing is you have your images. The images are set. Uh, you have a library set up that we've put in there for you of copy. You would actually go in there and hit assign image or clear image. And you, we, you can use my, they're set to default to go to my images or the photo dam. These are all the uh, flyer pieces that are available for photos. We can just click on any photo here, and it'll go in the box. And I can, if you see it and you don't like the way it looks, make sure the box is active. Click on the uh, uh, crop tool, manual, and it shows you the picture. You can blow it up. Move it around. You can see it move if you want to move this out of the way. And once you have it the way you want it, hit close. These are percentages for rotating. And that's basically what you would do with that. You do have also in the toolbar up here, you have a uh, character, insert special characters tool. The ones highlighted in red with a red box, that means there's no fonts available for those, which typically would not be used. There's, there's thousands of them. I usually uh, click on common. What you would do there is you just double click on the one you want, close, and you can at, go over to the superscript, hit superscript, and that makes it more typical of what it would look like. And if you don't want that, you can hit back, go back to normal or subscript, which brings it down to the bottom. Okay, so once you have your document to where you like it, you, would, you could either, again, click on download soft proof, and that'll give you a full high resolution proof or you can actually uh, just not download one, save the job, and once it's saved, you would be able to go out into your saved jobs, and I will show you, you can click on a, we'll click on it here, and I'll show you where you can make a low res proof. It's gonna come up right here. Okay, so you would click on in this spot, view PDF, and that'll give you an emailable low res proof. You can also, if you decide, you can delete the document, copy and duplicate it. So if you have a document you like, but you wanna put different logos in it and keep all the other information the same, click on copy document. And it dupes it and it makes you put new information in. Or you can just simply edit it, which is what we're gonna do and place an order. 
Okay, once we've uh, looked at the document and decided, okay, we're ready, we will go ahead and you can either change your page count here to order and hit add to cart. As you see, I had one in from before. We're gonna update our cart, click on remove uh, the remove box. We're gonna update shopping cart. I removed it. So now we just have the current one. In this box here, also the edit button will let you bring you back in if you decide that you've made an error and you wanna change something again, or you want, for whatever reason, you wanna make another low res proof, you can click on this and this will also give you a low res proof. When you click on it, it just downloads to wherever you have your downloads from your browser set to uh, download on your computer. Or in some cases, in some browsers, it may just open up a window uh, in the browser. What we will do now is you can actually add some special instructions if you want any. And then what we would actually hit check out. First thing that's gonna come up is your billing address. It's gonna be the standard address that you signed in with. That's what all the addresses will be. If you need to, click on this and you can add a new address for billing address or just leave it. Clicking continue now gives you the shipping address. Again, will be the same address. You can add a new one there or as I showed you, down in addresses here, you can add another new address. Click continue, and it gives you a little uh, page showing, viewing what you've ordered, how many, the name of the job, file name, a little picture of it, and then of course your billing and shipping and your shipping method. This is local truck delivery is set up as a default. You can put in anything you want in there. Um, we typically, um, we know what to do with these. They are always going to be uh, delivered by our courier. You would hit confirm once you're happy with all the information. And there you have placed your order. Now, once you're done with that order, you can either just go on to another document, a new document, start over. Or you can just go back into your saved work and take and look and see if there's something else you want to work on. It does take a little while for all these documents to show up because there's a lot of uh, memory in these. Okay, and then if you do need to uh, search for a previous order, you can type in test, again, like we talked about. One might show up now because we just did one. And then you would click on reorder and it'll come up just like it did when you placed it in your shopping cart. We can change a quantity at this point and update the shopping cart. But we'll decide, well, this time let's just uh, wait. We'll order this again next time. So we'll just leave it sitting in there, quantity 10. And then if we're done, we would actually just go in there and log out, or you can go back into your own account, clicking on my account, or your email address up here, either one works, back into your saved jobs or your orders. We've only got the one order placed. You click on it, it brings that up. You click down here to reorder, and then we're right back to where we were before. And that is basically how the site works. That is, that's all we have on this site. It, I, I think it's a very good site, and I think you will enjoy it. Uh, just if you need any questions, again, click down on the Contact Us and send us uh, some information or question, or feel free to call me anytime. You can ask for John or Cindy. Uh, we can answer any of your questions that you have. Thank you.